This is a Schrute book. When you have done something... Dwight Schrute comes up with his own currency scheme. How does this relate to the economics of money in general? My name's Matt Rozu. I'm an economist at Susquehanna University, and I have a conversation here with Dan Keister from Kansas State University. But before we get to our conversation, let's take a look at a longer clip from The Office. This is a Schrute buck. When you have done something good, you will receive one Schrute buck. 1,000 Schrute bucks equals an extra five minutes for lunch. Schrute bucks are legal tender anywhere in this office park. They are fully backed by the confidence our employees have in this company and in me, their leader. Liquid. Very good. You have earned one Schrute buck. I don't want it. Then you have been deducted 50 Schrute bucks. Make it 100. Don't you want to earn Schrute bucks? No, in fact, I'll give you a billion Stanley Nichols if you never talk to me again. What's the ratio of Stanley Nichols to Schrute bucks? The same as the ratio of unicorns to leprechauns. Okay, that's it. So <laughs> Dwight, Dwight comes up with a currency scheme called Schrute bucks. Uh, I mean, a whole lot of issues around money we can we can focus on. Oh yeah, on this one, the wh where do you start when you're showing these clips? So that particular clip, um, and just to give some background, I mean, I'm going to reach into my own pocket for about fifty dollars worth of knickknacks and things that I'm going to give away tomorrow, the first day of class, and we have a little trading uh, experiment that we demonstrate the value of, of, uh, mutually beneficial trade the first day of class. So it's not just going to be something that's out from nowhere, but I'll say, okay, everybody that answers these questions about money today, I'm going to give them a dollar and I'll get five or six winners. And I'll give them a shrewd buck. And most of them are actually pretty cool with it, but you know, they know it's not worth anything. Uh, and we start talking about fiat money and different currencies that have failed over the years. And, you know, how your fiat money is backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government in our case and and uh, and what that means and then um, and why it's not it doesn't have an intrinsic value. And so we'll do that and then I'll show that particular clip and we'll kind of demonstrate that that, you know, money is based on faith in a lot of cases and we have to have um, a stable banking system. And we have to have a stable currency and all these different things for our money to maintain its value. Uh, and I'll talk about quantity theory of money there and just a lot of different things. This is about 2.1 million Shruti bucks. I'll take the cash, please. Where did you get these? I earned them. These are counterfeit. I found them. I'm turning them in. What's the reward? No reward. Listen, Shruti. Either give me the 200 bucks or I'll flood the market with these babies, making them virtually worthless. Uh, and then the second clip, um, we'll talk about, you know, the German plan to um, to uh, uh, counterfeit the British currency and drop plane loads of, Brit of uh, fake British currency over the, over the uh, island uh, during World War II. And I asked him, you know, why did they do that? Were they trying to help the British people? You know, what, what's the motivation there and, and what would it do? And the Creed had figured that out, that you can really destabilize an entire nation, not just the economy. If you don't have um, faith in the currency or the currency becomes, uh, becomes worthless because of either um, too much printing press or just counterfeit, uh, whatever it might be. So, again, um, pretty short clips, but a lot we can talk about. For yeah. Now. Yeah. I mean, the standard you know, Milton Friedman, right? The inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon. You you print more money, you will have more inflation. Mm -hmm. And Creed correctly says, I'll devalue, I'll devalue your shrewd bucks. Not that there was that much to devalue ahead of time. Right. But, uh, by doing that, but you're right. I mean, there's very much real world circumstances here. Uh, if you go from however many shrewd bucks Dwight had printed before to flooding what he says 2.1 million shrewd bucks That's there right. <laughs> that looked like those must be uh deceptively uh large uh, bills. yeah uh, a small sheets of paper or something i don't know but yeah all of a sudden you would you would expect significant 
short-term inflation, and you could get into ideas of hyperinflation in countries that have indeed gone from one shrewd buck notes to, right, that probably has to be 1,000 or 10,000, or I'm going to show this on my wall. Uh, one of our finance professors, uh, Dr. Daydalt, uh, Pete Daydalt, um, he loves to, uh, he gave me one of there these, we go. the hundred trillion dollars, right? I mean, it really does, though, completely obliterate an economy when you do these things. Right. I was in one of those, Matt, and mine's in nowhere that good a shape. So I'm proud of you. Yeah, he, I think he bought a whole bunch through eBay. I actually have some others hiding behind. Uh, that's, my, that's my devalued currency uh, container, and I have it proudly on my wall. So, Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel for more economics content. I love to make economics fun and accessible, often using pop culture like here. We have a number from The Office, from Star Wars, from Curb Your Enthusiasm, from Game of Thrones, all sorts of other shows. So check it out.